Hi kids. Here we are, another video lesson. I'm in meetings all day, so I'm sorry. This is what we have to do. But we are on our last section of our chapter, which is on trapezoids and kites. So let's just look at these two pictures here. Can we still agree that a trapezoid and a kite is still a quadrilateral? You should be thinking yes, because it still has one, one, two, three, four sides, as does a kite. Let me move this guy down a little bit here. One, two, three, four, right? So they're still quadrilaterals, but what's different about these guys compared to what we've been seeing the last few sections is they're not parallelograms. Obviously, they're not parallelograms because my opposite sides aren't parallel. So that's what makes it not a parallelogram, right? Well, let's just dig in here and see what we have to talk about. So we're first going to study our trapezoids, and we have two different kinds. We have a non-isosceles trapezoid and an isosceles trapezoid. So let's look at our non-isosceles trapezoid. So some properties of a non-isosceles trapezoid is only one, you guys circle that, one pair of opposite sides are parallel. That would be these guys right here, right? Because those little arrows are indicating that my sides are parallel. And then we are told that consecutive angles are supplementary. So what I like to do, we go like this. Those guys add to 180, and these guys add to 180. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Okay, now if we jump to our isosceles trapezoid, so think of an isosceles trapezoid, remember? Excuse me, isosceles triangle. That's when two legs are the same. Well, it's a similar situation here. So for an isosceles trapezoid, we have some properties that's, that we can talk about. Um, the non-parallel sides, these are called our legs. So this guy right here and this guy right here are congruent. That's why we have our little tick mark. So those are my legs. Um, diagonals are congruent. Maybe underline that. So these little dashed lines in here are the exact same length. Base angles are congruent. So let's see here. This angle right here is equal to this angle right there as are these two top ones, this guy and this guy. And lastly, opposite angles are supplementary. So what's kind of different here, let's just go like this, this angle here and this angle here are supplementary. And same with this guy here and this guy here. Okay, I know that was like information overload and I can't obviously see your face to see if you're with me or not, but we will practice these and if you are totally lost, just flip back to this um, part in your notes and reference these bullet points, okay? So let's try some examples. So it says, find the measure of angle K and the measure of angle M. So remember kids, let's first talk about this. Is this isosceles or non-isosceles? This would be a non I saw, so these, maybe I want to jot that down because my legs right here are not congruent. And then remember, then these angles would add to 180. So if I take 180 and subtract 87 to find the measure of angle M, I get 93 degrees. Similar situation here for angle K and angle L. I know they add to 180, I'm going to subtract 51, so then I end up with a total of 129 degrees. Right there. So the measure of angle K, 129. Measure of angle M, 93 degrees. Consecutive angles are supplementary. Find the measure of angle R. Again, we have a non-isosceles trapezoid because these legs do not even look fairly congruent. They're totally different lengths. So then we would know that our consecutive angles are supplementary. They add to 180. So I'm going to write that out. So I'm going to have 12x plus 3 plus 7x minus 13 is equal to 180. 
Now we are going to add our like terms. So 12x plus 7x is 19x. Positive 3 minus 13 is negative 10, equal to 180. Move my 10 over, 19x equals 190. Divide out, x equals 10. But remember, we're trying to find the measure of angle R, so we actually have to plug in. So if I plug into this guy right here, 7 times 10 minus 13. 70 minus 13, 57 degrees. Good work, kids. Okay, now we're gonna shift gears. Now let's take a moment and work with an isosceles trapezoid. So we are looking at some segment likes here. So it says DG is congruent to what? Well, remember, this is a leg, so I'm looking for my other leg, which is directly across from it. So these guys right here are congruent. So I'm going to fill in the blank and put EF. And then we're asked to find what is DF congruent to? Well, remember, that is a diagonal, and it is congruent to its other diagonal, so it's congruent to GE. And if, guys, like if they look congruent, almost 98% of the time, they are. I think we can all agree that those legs and diagonals look like they would be the exact same. Huh. Now you're working with some angle measures. So, let's see here. We have some base angles. So 47 is equal to this guy right here, 47. So we know what W is, they're the exact same. But now you're wondering, well, how in the heck am I gonna be able to figure out what Y and Z are? You can do it one of two ways. You can either take these two, because I know they add to 180, or since they're the same, these guys also add to 180. It honestly doesn't matter, you're doing the exact same process. But just to be consistent so it's less confusing, I'm going to do it how we did it with our non-isosceles because it's the same process. So I'm going to take 180 minus 47, and we will get a total of 133. So if y, is, oops, if y is 133 degrees, remember these are base angles as well, so this guy right here is 133. So ultimately, folks, your base angles are congruent, and then these guys add to 180. Okay, then we're going to shift gears again and talk about a mid-segment of a trapezoid. So the mid-segment of a trapezoid connects the midpoints of the legs. So again, how in a picture would I tell if something is the mid-segment? Well, let's look. One tick mark one tick mark telling me that E is the midpoint of that side, two tick marks, two tick marks telling me F is the midpoint of that leg, which would then tell me that EF is my mid-segment. So once you've decided that if something is a mid-segment or not, we have some properties that come along with this. So let's read those. It says, if EF is the mid-segment of a trapezoid, ABC, then AB is parallel to EF, which is parallel to DC. So all three of these guys are parallel. And I think we can all agree that they look like they don't intersect. So yes, I'm convinced. Um, but then we can also find the measure of either a missing base or the mid-segment if we have the other two. So our little formulas right here, they're telling us that AB plus DC divided by 2 is equal to my mid-segment. So if I add my two bases, divided by 2, that will give me my mid-segment. So let's try a few examples of those. So again, let's just decide, is this a mid-segment? 
one tick mark, one tick mark, giving me a midpoint. One tick mark, one tick mark, giving me a midpoint. So yes, I now know that this is a mid segment. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our base seven plus 11, all over two. Seven plus 11 is 18. 18 divided by two is nine. So this guy right here, like this, is nine. And another way you can check yourself, folks, look at this. How far away is seven to nine? Two, how far away is nine and 11? Two, these numbers here should be the same because it's equally between them both. That's just a fun fact. You don't really need to remember that. All right, let's try this one. But this time I'm looking for a base. Formula is still the same, folks. 16 plus x over 2 equals 10. How do you get rid of divide by 2? Well, we multiply both sides by 2. Cancel, cancel. 16 plus x equals 20. How do we get x alone? Well, I subtract 16, which gives me 4. Oh, boy. Sorry about that, guys. So this right here is 4. Remember, we can double check ourselves. How far away is 4 from 10? Well, it's 6. How far away is 10 from 16? Well, it's 6. These are the same, so we are in good shape. Ooh, algebra. Um, this should tell us that yz is the mid-segment, my fault. Uh, but we are looking for x. But we just have algebra here. So again, your formula is the same, folks. I'm going to take my bases, add them together. So 38 plus x plus 14 divided by 2 and set it equal to my mid-segment. Excuse me. Okay, now, folks, remember, how do I get rid of divide by 2? I'm going to multiply both of my sides by 2. So remember, cancel, cancel. So I'm just left with my numerator. But now here's a tricky part, kids. Don't forget, you have to multiply 2 to everything. So then I'm really going to have 10x minus 38. Okay, I'm going to add my like terms over here. 38 plus 14 gives me a total of 52 plus x equals 10x minus 38. And then I'm going to bring my x's to the same side and my numbers to the other. So if I subtract x, subtract x, 52 equals 9x minus 38. If I add 38, we're going to get 90 equals 9x. Divide out x equals 10. Okay, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. So in a nutshell, that's what you need to remember about trapezoids. And then our last quadrilateral that we talk about for this chapter are kites. Here's a kite. Um, let's just see what we have to know about a kite. It says a kite is a quadrilateral with the following properties. It says exactly two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. So consecutive means they're next to each other. And I think we can all agree the small sides are congruent and the longer sides are congruent. So A, B is congruent to AD. They look like they're the same because they are the same. Similar to BC is the same length as DC. Okay, I'm good at that. Are you good at that? Then it says one pair of opposite angles are congruent. So it says angle ABC, so this big guy, I'm going to use green, ABC, so this big angle 
is congruent to angle ABC right here. And then our last thing tells us that our diagonals are perpendicular. So, we'll see it's black. My dashed lines in here are perpendicular, which means they form a right angle. So then all of these angles would be right. Well, I'm going to back up a second here. So if this angle is congruent to this angle, and I have my tick marks denoting my sides are equal, why would triangle ABC be congruent to triangle ABC? Well, let's look. Tick mark is a side. Angle mark, A. Two tick marks is a side. So these two triangles are equal by side, angle, side. So that will help you when you are trying to find missing measures because if you know like half of your measures on this one, you can easily fill in the stuff on this triangle. So you just have a lot of congruent triangles or like these two little guys right here, that guy and this one, those are equal. Similar, BEC is equal to triangle EDC. Once again, if things look equal, guys, they more than likely are. So we are asked to find these missing angle measures. Um, okay, let's just get started. Let's maybe start with the middle. We know that our diagonals are perpendicular, which makes all of these angles in here 90. So that was easy for angle 3. And then I would know that this guy is 90. And this guy here. All right, I'm going to fill them all in as 90. All right. And now you're like, well, now I'm pretty sure I can't figure anything else out. Well, remember I said all these triangles in here are equal. So where this triangle right here is equal to the one that's on the bottom beneath it. So really, angle 4 is the same as this angle 65. So this guy's 65. And then similarly here, this little guy is equal to this little guy, which is telling me angle 7 is really the same as angle 52. So now I'm just left with four triangles with just one missing angle measure, which is easy because now we know we can just subtract from 180. So if I want to find the measure of angle 1, I'm going to take 180 minus 90 minus 65 and get 25 degrees. And similarly, angle 2 is the exact same as angle 1, so it's also 25 degrees. Now to find angle 6, I'm going to take 180 minus 90 minus 52, and I'm going to get 38 degrees. And likewise, Angle 6 is the same as angle 5 up here, so it is also 38 degrees. Now I think we have found all of our angles we need to. That guy's 25, 25, 90, 65, 38, 38, 52. All right. One last example with heights, folks, and it's talking about side or segment length. So let's label what we are given. It says WX is 14, WR right here is 8, and I'm trying to find RZ. So this is my X. I'm trying to figure out what that is. Well, you have a conundrum, right? Like, how am I going to figure this out? Well, remember, guys, um, WX is the same as WZ, so if this guy's 14, so is this one. And then, remember, our diagonals are perpendicular, which makes this a right angle. And if I were to draw that out separately now, folks, look at this. Right angle, 8X14. That's just an easy-peasy Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to have 8 squared plus x squared is equal to my hypotenuse squared. Remember, because that's the one from the 
across from the right angle. And then we're going to work out these numbers, 8 squared, 64, plus x squared equals 196. Subtract over my 64, I'm going to get x squared is equal to 132. Take the square root, x equals 11.5 approximately. Again, I know I threw a ton at you. Um, try your best on your homework. Please note on, so you have a worksheet today on the trapezoid, excuse me, on the trapezoid worksheet, skip 14. And then on the kites worksheet, skip 6, 8, 10, and 12. Please be good for us up. Help each other out if you're stuck. Can't wait to see your smiley faces tomorrow. Have a good day. Bye.